We're diving into a tour of Harge, my no-build Dodge Grand Caravan. I live in this van full time and my unique layout has evolved organically as dictated by my ever-changing personal needs. Next on the Hogtide Rising channel. Welcome to the Hogtide Rising channel, an insight into nomadic van life seen through the eyes of a long time touring motorcyclist. First, we'll empty hards of all my stuff so that I can show you what goes where in my no-build layout. First, we have all my belongings that are stored under my bed. This large suitcase holds my seasonal changes of clothing. Because I'm only into it a couple of times a year, it doesn't have to be easily accessible. So the perfect place for it is under the bed, at the front of the vehicle, and in the middle of the vehicle. I can't easily get at it from the side doors or from the rear door, but that is not necessary. The bed is frameless to allow totes to be easily slid underneath and is constructed from a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I didn't drill any ventilation holes and I didn't paint the wood to avoid mold. During the winter on Vancouver Island, condensation and mold under the mattress was never a problem. The bed is supported by four three inch by three inch pieces of wood, which are attached to the plywood with shelving brackets. The shelving brackets provide stability and the thickness of the plywood prevents any flexing. The legs are strategically placed to allow totes to be easily stored and accessed. The bed is a twin size, 39 inches wide. I slide it all the way up against the, the seats, uh, the front seats, and all the way over to the edge of the van on the passenger side. This leaves me adequate room at the back of the van, at the back door, for me to put my thermoelectric cooler, a couple of totes, my porta potty, and then it leaves room al along the side of the van on the driver's side for my two suitcases, my change of clothes, and the shower kit that I take in with me when I would go to truck stops for a shower. My mattress is a four inch tri-fold memory foam with breathable fabric on the sides and on the bottom to cut down on the possibility of condensation buildup. It's a very comfortable mattress and I've had absolutely no problems with either bottoming out on it or with condensation. Let's get started loading all my worldly possessions into Harge. We'll start with the space on the passenger side under the bed. The storage space under the bed on the passenger side is not overly accessible because right inside the passenger sliding door is where I carry my solar panels, my table and my chair. So I put stuff under the bed there that I don't use every day small totes with correspondence and receipts, and a small file box find their home here. The sliding door on the driver's side is my primary access to my living space. So I slide totes under the bed here that contain stuff that I want quick access to. This tote holds the gear I use when shore power is available. It contains a 50-foot outdoor power cord rail, a small electric heater, and the AC to DC adapters for my Jackery 1000 power station and for my thermoelectric cooler. This tote holds my Instant Pot, my air fryer, and some cooking utensils. This tote is easily accessible when the sliding door is open, so I can get to these necessary appliances when I need to use them. Next is my Jackery 1000 power station. I need immediate access to this unit so it doesn't go under the bed. It fits into a space between the bed and the sidewall of the van, right behind the sliding door. This flip top tote is my main pantry and holds dry goods, condiments, and cooking utensils. 
When I'm traveling, it fits on the floor between the bed and the closed sliding door. When I'm parked and enjoying my living space, this tote occupies the driver's seat. The space at the back of my van, between my bed and the tailgate, has a dual purpose. In addition to storage, it also serves as my outdoor camp kitchen. These first two small totes slide under the bed. Access to these totes is blocked when the larger totes that make up my camp kitchen are in place. So this is where I store stuff that I don't use on a daily basis. This large tote goes in first and holds things I need quick access to, but not every day. Then we place my Hassock style commode. I want to make sure there's room for it to fit snugly before I put in the rest of my stuff. This tote is one of my daily use pantries and it also acts as my kitchen counter when I prepare meals outside the van. While I still have some access, I'll slide in the two small suitcases that I travel with. The first suitcase holds my changes of clothing for the current season. The second one is my travel shower kit. It holds soap, shampoo, conditioner, and a few items to make a shower stall more handicap accessible. With those two suitcases securely stowed away, I now have room for my mobile cool thermoelectric beer cooler. This last item is my repurposed motorcycle travel pack. I use it to store spare butane canisters, methyl hydrate for my Arrigo Heat Pal heater and stove, and a few vehicle maintenance supplies. If you want to see more about how I utilize the space at the back of my minivan, you can click on the above link. It will take you to my playlist about my van life mobile kitchen and storage. As I mentioned before, my table, my chair, and my solar panels travel in the space between my bed and the passenger side sliding door. I'll start filling this space with my Snow Peak folding camp table. Then my Snow Peak folding camp chair slides into the space between my bed and my table. I travel with 400 watts of Dokio folding solar panels. I have one 200 watt folding panel and two 100 watt folding panels. This setup provides adequate solar generated power to charge up my Jackery 1000 and my Jackery 500 power stations. These panels are very light and easy to move around and they fit quite nicely in this space between my bed and the sliding door. And I still have room for my folding shower and commode privacy tent. And with everything stored away and safely secured, the sliding door still closes. Wondering where I would find room for my 30-quart Bouge RV refrigerator? It has a permanent home in the passenger seat of my minivan, and it's secured in place with the passenger seat belt. And the Jackery 500 that powers my fridge travels in the passenger side footwell. My no-build layout for my van evolved naturally over time. I started with a suitcase, a duffel bag, and a sleeping bag, things that I was already traveling with at the time. When I bought the van, I added a double-high inflatable mattress, bedding, and my mobile cool cooler. Then, as time went on and I identified new needs, I added other items. I such as my Instant Pot, my air fryer, and of course a lot of other things. 
But I didn't rush into buying things on speculation. I waited until I actually identified a need before I went and made a purchase. After the inflatable bed failed for about the fifth time in three months, I got my brother to help me build the bed that I'm currently using. My van is currently at its stage in development where I can comfortably sleep, cook, eat, do my bed exercises, work on editing my YouTube videos, and of course relax in the evening, comfortable and snug in my minivan. Of course, I am constantly upgrading and improving the layout of my, of my van. So the van now is quite different from where it was when I started, and but not anywhere near as different as it might be in a few months. Would you like to see more Hogtide Rising content? Then please check out the links below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button.